In this video, we will learn about the sequential circuits and we will see how they differ from the combinational circuits. The logic networks which we studied called multiplexers, demultiplexers, adders, half adders, subtractors, half subtractors, encoders and decoders, these are all are the examples for combinational circuits. These are called the combinational circuits. In case of combinational circuits, the output at any given time are dependent on the inputs at that time. In contrast to this, we have got something called sequential circuits. In case of sequential circuits, the output not only depends on the input at that time, but it also depends on the past history of the input. Here I said the past history. So, the past inputs have to be stored somewhere. So, we need a memory in case of sequential circuits. As we do not have to store any past data with respect to combinational circuits, there is no need of memory with respect to combinational circuits. In case of sequential circuits, there are two basic classifications. One is synchronous sequential circuits and the other one is asynchronous sequential circuits. In case of synchronous sequential circuits, the output changes its state as soon as the clock given. Even though there is a change in the input and if there is no clock given, then the output doesn't change. So, a clock is must in case of synchronous sequential circuits. In case of asynchronous sequential circuits, the output changes its state as soon as there is a change in the input. So, there is no need of clock in case of asynchronous sequential circuits. The best examples for synchronous sequential circuits are flip-flops and the examples for asynchronous sequential circuits are latches. Both flip-flops and latches are used to store either 0 or 1. So, these are the memory units that are used in sequential circuits.